The smoke coming off of this thing, it grabs you by the haunches. Well, I've already got things planned. Yes, now this is the top five Isla Scotches as determined by whiskey lovers. Magnificent bastards in the whiskey tribe. Now, specifically Isla whiskeys. Right. Now, Isla whiskey, uh, we're gonna go through number five all the way up to number one, but quickly, there's not a lot of Isla distilleries that even in, exist, yeah? There's only eight okay. Isla distilleries. And uh, there's a ninth one in progress, a reopening Port Ellen right now. Okay. They're hoping to. Yeah. Um, and I, th I think there might be a few other things in the works, but officially there's eight distilleries. But they are, by the way, Bamor, Brooklady, Bunahaben, Kuyula, Kiloman, Lagavulin, and Lafroy. Keep in mind, the people are going to be voting up stuff that they can get their hands on. Mm -hmm. That's going to be at a price point that's not going to break the bank. What's okay. number five? Lafroy Glore coming yes. in at number five. Now, so, this is a non-age statement whiskey. This is might be my favorite expression of Lafroy. Okay. Uh, it was a special edition made by John Campbell, the master distiller, and it mixes together, uh, it mixes together uh, quarter cask, bourbon cask, and I think a little bit of sherry cask too. Did you want a glass? No, no, we'll, we'll take turns with that one. All right, fine, I'll get my own glass. <laughs> Stingy bastard. It's like you don't know me. Now the, the thing that's interesting to me about uh, Scotch and specifically Isla Scotch is whenever people think about Scotch and they're not really whiskey people, they're not really Scotch people, they think of these really smoky, peaty, like savory, meaty, briny types mm -hmm. of whiskeys, but... That's if, not most scotch. Yeah, if you look at the scotch that's actually being sold across the world, that is definitely the minority of scotch. Yeah, the smoke. comment by people is, when people say scotch, they think Isla, yeah. but when they drink scotch, they drink blends. Yeah. <laughs> if you go by the numbers. Yeah, yeah. But Isla absolutely stands on its own in terms of a very unique category of whiskey. There's going to be flavors in here that you're not going to be able to find anywhere else. Now, Lore balances the uh, briny, smoky, medicinal notes of Laphroaig yeah. with that sherry cask, and then a little extra wood spice from the quarter cask fills. Mm -hmm. At first blush, whenever you're approaching smoky peaty Islas for the first time, you're just going to get dominated by the smoke. But mm -hmm. as we're going to find in a lot of these Islas oh. coming up, there are some beautiful, sweet, fruity elements that reveal after you acclimate to the smokiness. There's even a hint of vanilla in the middle of the palate on this one. Yeah. Oh, another Lafroy, number four. What are the odds? This is Lafroy 10. Now right. this is the one that's gonna be much easier to hunt down. This is the Lafroy you were thinking of when someone said, let's drink Lafroy. Yeah. Uh, this is the Lafroy that is usually poured during all of their amazing ad campaigns where people give it descriptions like a cigar smoking walrus or a, a mermaid's bath water. A mermaid's bath water <laughs> or a seagull's armpits. There's a lot of uh, notes both on the nose and the taste that bring you back to that really kind of briny seaside. This is what I imagine Scotland the seaside like. of Scotland yeah, yeah, to yeah. be like. Now I, uh, it also reminds me, I have this memory when I was a kid of going to swim lessons at an indoor pool at the YMCA right. and walking through the doors of the indoor pool, yeah. pick up that glass and smell, yeah. and you're like, oh, it's the indoor YMCA. Like the chlorine type. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> I love it, I love it. The chlorine, so, and then what's a little bit more prominent compared to the lore we just had is this medicinal iodine note from Yeah, me. it's still almost light and refreshing when as compared to some of the other sherry cask islas. Mm. Now, Isla dates back in human. There are human traces on Isla dating back to 8000 BC. And then in the early hundreds okay. AD, yeah. it was a Gaelic tribes that sort of took it over, uh, except the whiskey tribes. Except about three. Going back. I know. We're ancient. Then in about roughly 900s or so, it got conquered by the Vikings. Oh. So the Vikings ruled the island for like 300 years. Right, and Isla is an island. It's an island How off big? the southwest coast of Scotland. Yeah. It's almost even with most of the lowland region of Scotland, a little bit higher, yeah. and uh, closest to the Campbelltown Peninsula that yeah. drops down. Are you ready for number three? What's number three? Number three is Ardbeg Ugadol. This, of the uh, various special editions of Ardbeg, this oh. is one of my favorite ones. Already, of already, you're gonna get much more of like a a maltiness on this nose. Yeah, and also way more sherry impact, I yeah. think. 54.2%. Mm -hmm. I'm getting Hot some diggity dang. rich honey floral note in there. Yeah, it's a super then, raisin in the background. Yeah, so, so the dark fruit and then um, 
Here's the caramel. This has so much more of the deep, low mid to mid range oil notes. In terms of, if the Laphroaig, the lore or the tan is gonna be more medicinal and iodine and a little bit too briny and challenging, this is still gonna be squarely Isla, but you get this much more complimentary layer of sweeter elements that mm -hmm. are playing really nicely with the smoky bits. Now we're gonna contrast this with number two. Ardbeg 10 came in at number two on the top five Isla scotches as voted on by the whiskey lovers across the world in the whiskey tribe. So look at the color difference for one. Oh yeah, the Oogdal is darker for sure. And then the nose, see it's the same kind of contrast that you're getting from lore to tin. It's yeah. the similar lore being darker and richer and then the tin being uh, vibrant and spicy and bright. Ardbeg, the Oogadol is that rich deep sherry fullness and the tin a little more bright and shiny. The tin is giving me more of actually a meaty, a smoked meaty note. I agree, I think Ardbeg as opposed to Laphroaig presents more like a protein kind of like meat feel. One of the common journeys that I've very often seen with Magnificent Bastards in the Whiskey Tribe is whenever, you know, they dabble, they dip a toe in the world of Isla and they said, yeah, this is something I'm super into. They're not scared away by the super smoky, earthy, briny types of notes. Uh, then it's very often that they just get really swept up in this scene of the super peaty, super smoky Isla whiskey. It's like the hoppy beer guys yeah. who just become hop heads obsessed with more and more hops. And the path that I very often see is they get so deep into this scene that all the other whiskeys start to feel kind of boring with the yeah. ryes and the bourbons and the Irish. A and similar thing happens with cask strength, I think. Yeah, no, no, everything else starts to feel a little bit more tame. Go ahead, live in Isla, live in um, really smoky, peaty scotches for a while. I think Campbelltown is another place. On the journey. Big, intense, and aggressive flavors. Yeah. But after a while, you have had the experience of having something dominantly peaty and smoky, but then you get acclimated and it starts to reveal all of these other fruity, floral, sweeter, caramel, desserty flavors underneath that dominant smokiness. Now you are prepared to go back to other categories and you're gonna, you're gonna be able to find nuance and intricacies to those whiskeys that you probably weren't picking up before. Our number one is Ron Swanson's favorite. So this is Lagavulin 16. He's sort of- I'm drinking whatever Ron Swanson tells me to drink. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. Of course. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, now this actually had, let me check the numbers here. Sure. This had more than double of the number two whiskey, the Yardback 10, that came yeah. in at number two. This had more than double the votes coming in at number one by yeah. far, a wide margin. And you know, I, this is about I get as it. iconic as you get. Got because it. it gives you all the richness and peatiness and brine that you expect from a good Isla. Right. But it's also delicate and subtle and nuanced. For an Isla, yeah. it's really beautiful. This sort of balances to yeah. me between the Laphroaig uh, tin and the Ardbeg Oogdal, the sherry cask. But uh, phenomenal whiskeys. It's so good, isn't it? Okay, we want to give something an honorable mention, which is Brooklotti, and they are one of my heroes. They do all these special edition, they focus on farm terroir and Isle of Barley. Sure. They do all these different ways of splicing whiskey out. The whiskey lands here. And among those, hang on. Among those special things that they did, they revived the name of an old distillery in Isla. Okay. And they used it to make the most heavily peated whiskey currently on the market. Okay. Octomore. Now. Now, there are various versions of Octomore. So this one is specifically <laughs> 9.1 now, range. This is really fun because uh, as many peat heads are out there, mm -hmm. the number of people that just consider themselves hardcore Isla Scotch, smoky, peaty, briny, give it to me. The number of people I talk to and I ask, have you had the Octomore? They're like, no, I've never had the Octomore. <laughs> what? They've never had the Octomore. <laughs> this, this is five years old. There is an, a, 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 an echelon, a tier of, of peatiness mm -hmm. beyond the top five smoky whiskeys we've had. And it is peatiness that gets so beyond savory, meaty, smoky. Yep. For me, a lot of the Octomores turn into a funky cheese. And they go so smoky right. that the smoke starts to come back off again and it's like they come full circle. Right. Like it's there's so much smoke your brain just goes Nigma yeah. and it falls and then you're and then you can't yeah you can't yeah. taste any more smoke. Yeah, yeah. Like whoa and you start finding all these other things. Alright, alright. Oh man. Dude it's the nose on this thing. And I, I've said this before on uh, our other whiskey review channel with the Octomore oftentimes on the nose. It doesn't smell like this should be a consumable 
thing. <laughs> it's like, no, no I think this is going to go in my right? car somewhere. <laughs> Get the smokiest, um, thick cut, charred black pepper bacon. Yeah. Add to it stinky cheese. Yeah. And then on a charcuterie board, the honey with the comb. Yeah. Uh, Add those three things together, and that's what's in this glass. Oh! oh. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, oh, yeah. That'll do. Based on the most common, aggressive, intense island notes of the burnt rubber and the iodine and the stinky cheese and yeah. the smoky meats. Let's make a nose worthy of Isla Glory. Uh. Daniel, we went through and we explored some very popular Isla brands. The yes. top five most beloved Isla Scotches amongst the, the magnificent tribe. bastards in the whiskey tribe here. Now, like any whiskey, yeah, you're gonna be putting down some money. Yeah. And it would be nice to know if you're definitely gonna like it before you plunk down that hard-earned cash. How do you do that? I went to the store and I got all of these basic, you know, notes and, and ingredients and elements that you often find in Isla. Like, like seagulls armpits? <laughs> Joe. You saying, Rex, I really want to like get into Isla, but I don't know how. That totally happened, <laughs> right? Yeah, no. <laughs> you see, this is how much I care, Joe. For your knees. <laughs> I'm gonna be right here. Let's go get some flavors. Does that feel familiar, that whole situation no. <laughs> there? <laughs> Thing is, Joe, only reason I don't feel bad is because you rolled me down a hill in a barrel once. <laughs> oh, okay. That's definitely fast. That's that's well, I've already got things planned. So it's all the different notes in a sherry cask isla where you're gonna get the fruity yeah. notes. <laughs> the fresh fruit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I can smell it? it from over here. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's the first thing. <laughs> honey do melon. The accuracy. Here. Uh, oh no! Yeah, or, well you know what earthiness is. Earthiness is part of the honeydew melon. <laughs> I think that's working. Yeah. <laughs> I think that'll do. <laughs> so, notes of honeydew. What else do we have? Uh, like citrus. A citrus layer, Slight which is lovely. Citrus layer. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that, that feels pretty accurate. Sweet. I think you need a little bit of the salt of a seafood note. Oh, oh. yeah, the, the, sea, like the brine, <laughs> the seaside, the shore. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's totally the same as the real thing. Can I have a little bit of that cheese? There, that is going everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Here's gonna be my recommendation. <laughs> Smoked ham. Smoked ham. We're always talking about the protein. Lovely. I think, hang on, let me just. Yeah, I think that's the right that's one. <laughs> Seaside and fruit notes. Mango clamato. Now this one's a little. <laughs> oh god, it's on me! Oh, I'm burned. It's like washing everything else off. So. <laughs> Sometimes we always say bacon. Oh, but <laughs> oh god, did you, I did get clamato all over the place. I think I have to throw it. And just get the wad launched up. Yeah, ready? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's close. Ah! To give it the alcohol twist, that zest, slight little burn. The sweet nectar. Oh. <laughs> I wore it. It's a combination of everything. It's like a combination of tire. And you feel like you know Isla inside and out. I, I, I don't. We bump and dribbly hop. I'm as happy as I can be. Boom, boom.